slides now? Yes, can see the slides. Um, um, so I'll, I'll just start the talk now. Thank you. Okay. Let's go ahead. Thanks. Uh, Hi, um, I'm William. I'm a software developer, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, data visualizations and maps with JavaScript. Um, oh. So um, I'm going to showcase something similar to this today. Um, um, it's it's blurry. Uh, but I'll show the real thing later. And there are problems with mine. I'm not sure how to, if I can, if you can see. Oh gosh. I don't know if, can you see? We still see the, um, the, the slide with the... Okay, I have to... With the earth map manually. Oh, that's, I think that's better. So I can yes, I can I can now switch. Now see, we can see everything. Can see, see, oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> uh, so if you look like on with what Mapbox gives you, I, I I'm not sure if I've, I've done something wrong or Mapbox does this like the D is cut off in New Zealand. Um, um, I'm sorry about this. Like, like, I write down some notes inside my slides. It's because this talk has been postponed quite a few times, and I might forget. Um, I might forget what I want to say in the in the presentation. Um, uh, here's um, another another interesting thing to look at. Um, if if you can't see it, it's fine. Um, here it is zoomed in. Um, there's there's a problem here with uh, a data visualization given by Channel News Asia. Um, like this, uh, there's there's supposed supposed to be something here, but there's none, and I think it's it's just a mistake. I think I mean they probably didn't really care about it. I guess. Um, so what I want to say is that every everybody makes mistakes, and I'll be. I guess this was done using D three. Uh, I could I can check now, but I have to. But I guess it's done. Uh, I'll talk about uh, D three again later. Um, here is where a, a lot of data visualizations you see now are are taken from this repository and I just want to note that there's and just notice that there's only one repository and I'm also really grateful for the work in that you can see in this repository uh, all the, the this slides these these slides are going to be um, up on GitHub later on, so you can look at you can look at this after after my talk. Um, here's the sources that this repository takes from, um, and I I wanted to show this this source uh, the this this part of the repository because um, this is the data that I used in late March. Um, and just notice that, uh, oh gosh, so big. Uh, 
late March that you get the province and state, country, region, you know, last update, all, all this, all these, uh, all these, uh, these headings, and, and this is your this is your raw, raw data. But then on but then on oh gosh. Um, I think this was one week ago. And I'm just guessing that the it's the same now. Um, the headings have changed and the raw data that you that I pulled from was different. Actually, a lot of other people pulled, pulled from this data and they created APIs. I think I'm gonna talk about that later. Um, here's something interesting, which I'll, I think I'll, um, yeah, I'll talk about, I'll talk about uh, pulling from this from from this source later. Here's this here's this something interesting that I found. Um, and then I think it looks nice. Um, so when you um, build maps in JavaScript, I I think you look at um, these map libraries at first. So leaflet, open layers, um, and later I'm going to show where I got stuck when using open layers. So I ended up using leaflet for speed, and it looks like what I wanted to get in the end. Um, you probably use these map APIs as well if you're working on maps. Um, some some things that you might consider is like pricing. So for uh, for Mapbox, I'm quite scared. Uh, so for Google Maps, you can set daily quotas to protect against unexpected increases. So um, you don't want your billing to suddenly increase without you knowing. Uh, um, um, which which I faced when using Mapbox, so so it's important to pick the right tool for the right job, and and don't be like me if you can avoid it. I I only picked Leaflet because I only ended up using Leaflet because it works nicely with Mapbox and it it, was, it got close to the results I wanted to get. Uh -huh. So for security, uh, you might want to look at that too, like how it deals with tokens. Um, and how it, how each of these map APIs deal with security, and and how good their documentation is for security. Um, so you can link Leaflet to Google Maps by using plugins. Uh, you can also have a look at these other these other plugins as well. Like Apple's Map JS, MapKit JS, and Bing Maps. Um, like uh, there's comparisons usually between Google Maps and Mapbox and other Map Map APIs. Um, I'm not going to go through that uh, in this talk. Um, this talk is just meant for like things specific to my to to what I wanted to to get. Um, if uh, also if there's a plan like this, if there's a better API that that um, can help with open source projects like what I what I did that would be that would be that would be best because um, I don't want to worry about um, billing and things like that when I'm doing client side small small projects open source. Uh, so before the demo, I just want to say again that if you take data from a, a repository or an API, be prepared for the data format to change and break your entire app. Uh, this will tend to happen if you automate pulling, fetching the data. 
I'm not, I, something I considered was like automating the whole process to get the latest, to show the latest map and the latest data. Um, but um, after a while, I, I realized that if you pull from a, a dynamic API, um, your, your app might break, it might be inaccurate, which is not what, uh, not, not good for you, your users. Uh, so so if, I'll, I'll talk about this later, um, in the next slide, um, it, or, or now. It should also tap to changes every day or at shorter intervals. Um, uh, if you intend to work at a news organization or medical institution, this might be helpful for you. Um, this is also helpful for database in general. Okay. Uh, so something I I thought would be nice to to have. I think it'd be nice to have if you do any of this database in the future. Is um, you should let um, let your users choose the primary location. Because you you look here, and and what I want to see is like data on Singapore, just and and I get you know this, and I have to like slow down, get to that in the end. It's takes time. Mm -hmm. um, also, yeah, there are enough existing visualizations online on COVID already. <laughs> uh, please don't add more unless you can maintain it well. That's what that's why I'm reluctant to make to, to add more to this. Uh, this this whole thing I'm I'm doing is just a learning tool and it's not well you can use it to deploy something but but just maintain it well. <laughs> and so yeah okay um, demo Um, so when I started off, um, I started off with open, I, I tried, I, I tried to do, I tried to use both open layers and leaflet, um, just to, just to do a comparison for them. Um, and I think I tried. I tried them both around the same time, but what I got for open layers was this. What I got in the end, what I did was uh, I, I followed their documentation, and I, for some reason, I did server side, which is not not what I wanted. Um, and then I did did their client side thing, and that is. That's what you get when you get when you use um, open open layers. Oops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you get when you use open layers. Um, and open layers compared to leaflet, it's nice because, um, like for instance, if you want, it it localizes the the language of the locations automatically. Uh, it gives you gives that out of the box um, for for all the different places in the world. Um, but the thing is, for open layers, I got stuck. I got stuck here, and like I didn't want to move further because it is just more complicated. Because I wanted to to get something similar to similar to this. Which is shown in Channel News Asia, um, and um, I don't I don't mind it looking like this, but to, to get the markers on, it's quite difficult. I think it was quite difficult. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's it for open layers. So I tried leaflet and. 
Oh, I was gonna show. Um, I was gonna show the real like like what I was trying to recreate. Um, and it's this this thing that's on channel channel news Asia. And this um, kind of kind of laggy. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, this is mine. Um, this is what I got when I after I use leaflet. So when you when you zoom in, you get well you get like um, it, the the darker red areas are um, places where it's more affected, I guess. Uh, and then when you zoom in, you get a similar thing where you can see for each. Um, each country, like their current situation. And this is March 20, 21st. Um, so I'm going to go through how you can build something like this. If I have time. Um, so the. HTML is here. Add leaflet. Add another thing for leaflet. Uh, I think you see this in the, the documentation is quite nice. Um, and I joined, oh, uh, I, I'm not sure if I have time. Well, if I joined I joined both chart.js and leaflet into the same into the same app, I should. So what I mean by chart.js is like you can view the you can view the cases left. Mm -hmm. As well on the same. I just put it all together. So that's what chart CSS does. Um, uh, then all you have to do for leaflet is Add this. All you have to do for chart.js is add that. Um, and notice I don't use d3.js and I use chart.js. And I'm, if I have time, I'll go through that. Um, why, I know, why I try to avoid using d3 now. Um, that's this button to, to switch between them. Um, Access token here, uh, which I'm not going to show. <laughs> but the whole thing is open source. But I, I removed the the access token in my the public repository. Um, the data. Uh, this is the data from uh, John Hopkins, I think. That's that's the data, and then the script. For leaflet is here, uh, and just that's that's all it takes to do like all of that. So I think uh, set the you set the bounds of the map here. Top. Southwest, northeast. Um, then you set when you first load the page, you set the center here and set the view here. And I, uh, I think it, I'm not sure which country it's set to for default. I think it's London or something. Um, then add the tiles. Um, so, so for for mapping in general on the web, I think everything has to use tiles. Uh, Five hundred twelve pixels, I guess. I think so. That's fine. Everything's made of um, uh, tiles that are this. This size. 
Um, set the markers, which are the markers are the blue, these blue things the, where the pop up comes from, uh, is attached to. Uh, the circles are the circles are the circles. Um, the red circles. Uh, add them here. I'm trying to. <laughs> I'll just go through this like. For each for each data set for each data point, you add a marker here, and then it's pop up, and then you add the pop up to the position, latitude, longitude on the map. Um, you add the circle as well. Um, uh, then you add the marker layer. The layer of markers, all, all the markers, which is all the blue points onto the map, and then you add all the circles onto the map, and and you think you you think you've added all the all the markers already, but what do you what do you have to do? I'll I'll, I'll tell you later. Um, so all the blue blue points. Um, I think um, oh. um, I think you should <laughs> oh gosh um, I think I think all the markers are pushed here, but I'm not sure uh. I don't remember what that that does, uh, but mm. the thing is, I wanted to add comments onto this. I thought I'd be able to remember. Hmm. Anyway, anyway, um, you have to add, I've, like I've added all the markers already. Um, um, but I have to add it again. I don't know, I don't know why. I have to do that for leaflet. Um, and then I I want to remove them. I think I think I have to clear um, I have to clear them every time you zoom in and out at a certain point. I have to delete these blue markers at a certain zoom point. And the thing is, uh, actually, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have even gone through the code. Like what I what I tried to do was, I just wanted to show this. But what what you might firstly do is, it'll show it'll show this, all, all of this. But what happens is that the whole map is shown. Uh, the, it shows all the markers. It shows all the markers and all the pop-ups for the entire map, even though it's not in the view. In, even even if it's not in the view right now. Um, so in in my code here, which is public, it, which is open source, you can find out how I did that. It, and it's these few lines only. Um, but what what that what it does out of the box is that 
it shows you all the pop-ups outside of this view. Um, and it lags a lot. It, it, there's a very huge performance hit because all of these things are DOM. All of these things are built using the DOM. Uh, the pop-ups are all DOM. I think I guess the markers, I think the markers are images, which is not really not ideal. So uh, okay, I think I've gone over time, but okay. Uh, uh, which is really not ideal. So I, I got around that, made it quite perf made the performance quite quite good. I think it performs better than performs better than this. Yeah, which which you can't even really load. And also something about this I've missed out is that I fixed for this, I fixed there. This this gray thing you get when you drag to the top or to the bottom. Okay. Okay, green. William. How how about um, where do people get the project from if they want to try your code out? Um, uh, I think it's, this it's on my it's on my GitHub. It's, uh, it's not you can't find just type in like the search for data. Search for data visualizations and maps. Your uh, GitHub is wl wl two. Is it? Yep. Um, should be up here. Oh. And it's this, okay. you just search for this repository. And all you have to do is, all you have to do is add the private key for leaflet, for Mapbox in this. Right in this in this string here, and then you can get the whole thing, um, and, and view the whole thing again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. Very interesting. Uh, we're going to ask some uh, open it up for questions now. I think uh, Eric's going to unmute everyone in case anyone wants to ask questions. I don't know if Chian can help you with the. Um, with the billing, because I know he's had trouble with that you know in the past. I have uh, one question for you. Um, did you did you try making the circles? Because you you made them darker when there were more uh, cases. Did you try making them larger by the, by? The, uh, by the number of cases, changing the size. No, I think I I tried not to do that um, because I I knew that that would take quite a long time, so I avoided doing that. Uh, it takes a considerable amount of time compared to um, how like how I got all this set up. It it was quite quick, and I and I finished this like like within one or two days, I think, okay. um, sometime in March. So, and I think joining, getting those large circles and doing it like Channel News Asia, there's also a maybe performance problems that you might have to deal with as well once you get that out. Maybe. We can never know about performance until we try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess you could try. Uh, anyone else have questions for William? I've got a question for I I don't know if I'm allowed to ask. Yeah, go ahead. Like like 
Oh, actually, actually, it's difficult to ask, like, like in this in in Zoom. But I was just wondering how many people still use uh, D three for their database. Yeah, I can't. I, I don't think I can ask. I don't think I can ask that I'm online. Hmm. You can. I, um, I think everyone can click on the past participants button at the bottom. And then you can select yes or no. I can't even get. I mean, everyone can select yes or no, and then you can see it. Yep. And um, yes means D three, right? Yeah. How many people still use D three for all their? No data? means something else. So just to repeat, to ask why you don't use it anymore. I, I still no, I still use it, but I'm just wondering how many people still use it. And actually, the, the follow up question would be: Have you found anything better than them? Because it's causing, it's caused problems for me, like for some work, and it's it happens again. And I ended up using Chart JS. Yeah. I used to use D3. Um, now we're using victory charts for React, uh, which seemed a little bit easier to get going with, but uh, I couldn't really say which one's best. I think D3 would give us more flexibility. Uh, but victory was very simple to just put the data in and get some charts and some interactivity. OK. Uh, so, um, maybe at the end, you can have more chat after the end of the meetup. Um, and, and Keita, 